far north of Scotland, part of the Northwest Highlands Geopark, and the inspiration for important concepts in tectonics and understanding of mountain building processes that have been exported all over the world. In the back there lies the peak of Ben Hope, but our target for this visit is the lower ridge immediately overlying the lock, which is Ben Arnabol. And we visited on a windy afternoon in March. Welcome to Loch Erebol. We're not really worried about the loch. We're going up into the hills here to the east. It contains one of the most important outcrops in world geology. The ground here quickly becomes moorland. These slopes were first studied by the great Victorian geologist and pioneer Charles Lapworth. Lapworth was a diligent and methodical observer and a pioneer in geological mapping. So what did Lapworth find? OK, so we're up on the western slopes of Ben Arnabol. It's a rather insignificant looking hill, but the stories it tells for tectonic geology are very significant indeed. So those white rocks in the cliff are Cambrian quartz sandstone. Actually, at the very top of the cliff is something different. So let's go up there and have a look. Well, these rocks here don't look like quartz sandstones. No, not at all. These are gneisses. So we've got gneisses on top of sedimentary rocks. Well, let's go find the contact and see if we can make sense of it, just like Lapworth did 140 years ago. This is what all the fuss is about. Those are old gneisses. These, these are the quartz sandstones. And over there is the contact. So that is what we call today the Arnival Thrust. It's putting old gneisses. These are Louisian basement rocks on top of Cambrian quartz sandstones. And that's the contact. Really remarkable. So this is the thrust contact here. Under the heather, they're quartz sandstones. Right up here, there are pretty intact looking gneisses and pigmatites, the pink stuff. But in between, there's this material, which is sort of darkish green very streaky and foliated. These are myelonites. In fact, this is the type myelonite. It was here in 1883 and 1884 that Charles Lapworth recognised these rocks for what they were, the products of intense shearing. He coined the term myelonite, derived from the Greek to mill, mylos. These rocks have been milled rather like a steel mill smeared out in the act of thrusting and the movement is top that way and we can find structures in these rocks to that betray that sense of movement we could trace those pink pegmatites down towards the thrust plane down here and that pink layer streaks out and becomes really thin along the thrust let's nip in there and have a look and see what it looks like in there. So the felspathic unit in here, the expigmatite, is breaking up, boudinaging into the 
myelinitic material that lies between. It's a bit lichenous in here, hard to tell. If you look at the little pegmatitic layer above, it's perhaps a bit clearer. Coming down here, thinning away, just tracking out into the fabric. So intense shearing, modifying and reworking the nices. They don't look like nices anymore. So we've seen how the gneisses get smeared out onto the thrust plane. Now let's look at these uh, quartz sandstones. We'll just go down here a bit behind me and look at what happens in the sandstones. Well, there's the thrust plane coming round with the marlites on top of the lighter coloured quartz sandstones. And the bedding's pretty obvious, isn't it? Coming down through here. But then oblique to bedding, we can see features like this in this orientation. These are burrows. They started off perpendicular to bedding and they've been sheared over by movement on the thrust. So the movement direction was left to right, shearing the footwall quartz sandstones in the process. So we can use small scale observations linked through the outcrop to deduce the movement direction on the Arnable thrust. These really nice outcrops have been used to train generations of geologists in tectonic techniques. And it's been important for the development of the history of earth science. So Lapworth discovered this structure while he was mapping in 1883-84. And he recognised the importance of the contact for explaining the geology not just here, but in the whole area and region of Northwest Highlands, he realized that there were large sheets of rock carried out over each other and uh, in the process created this new type of rock, this milled material, myelinite. Well, that's important internationally. It really established the idea of large scale displacements and discovered the types of rocks that have become softened by that thrusting process. But the term thrust also originates from here, but not from Lapworth, but by his, well at the time was, arch enemy, Archibald Geeky. And it was here that the Highlands controversy was resolved. The Highlands controversy, a great debate between people who thought that the structure here was faulted and those which included Geeky originally, that thought that this sequence of rocks here was a simple stratigraphic passage. Lapworth blew that out of the water because he shows, well, you can see clearly we've got metamorphic rocks over sedimentary, so a clear tectonic contact. So Geeky came here in 1884 and was shown this ground uh, by his colleagues Ben Peach and John Horn, who were also working in the area. And he really couldn't hold out any longer and he had to admit that there were tectonic structures here. In fact, he was so convinced, he then published the term thrust, coined the term thrust, for these structures. So this is the Arnawal thrust. It's the world's first thrust. These discoveries changed understanding of the Northwest Highlands and the ideas have been applied around the world. <laughs>